Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, we're going to be sewing the tank top from my summer sweatsuit pattern. This pattern is a tank top and short shorts set that is perfect for sewing and wearing in the summer. It's super, super comfortable and really quick to sew. So it's great when the weather is really hot. I already have a video where I sew the shorts and I will put a link in here. This pattern is drafted for sizes A to N, which covers bust and hips of 32 to 58 inches, which is 81 to 147 centimeters. It's a PDF pattern and it's available in my shop. So today we're going to be sewing the tank top and it's really a pretty quick sew, so we're gonna do it all in one go. Let's get started. To make the tank top that's part of the summer sweatsuit, you're going to need four pattern pieces. You'll need pattern piece number one, which is for the back, and you will cut out one piece on the fold. And this pattern piece has a shortened length and line right here and one notch on the side seam. And then you'll need to cut out one from pattern piece number two, which is for the front. And this is cut on the fold and there's a shortened length and line here and a notch on the side seam. You'll also need piece number three, which is a strip of fabric that will finish the neck opening. And then you'll need two from piece number four and those will finish the armholes. These are both cut on the fold and remember to cut them with the most amount of stretch going this way because you'll want it to stretch along your neckline and armhole. In the pattern booklet, there are three pages with information on common pattern adjustments, including if you wanna lower or raise the neckline or the armholes, if you're gonna lengthen or shorten the length of the tank top, and a little bit of info on doing a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment. I also have a video about two ways to make a full bust adjustment, including making a bust adjustment without adding a dart. I'll put a link to that in here. You don't need any notions to sew this pattern, but you will need a ballpoint or jersey needle. You may also want a twin needle for your top stitching. I really like to use a twin needle on this tank top to finish the neck and armholes because I think it looks really nice. But if you don't have a twin needle, you can also use your ballpoint needle and do a triple zigzag or single zigzag stitch. I have a whole blog post about using twin needles though, so it's definitely worth looking up and learning how to use one. So to get started, you can take your bands and put them right sides together. Just stitch the short end. So get those all ready to take to the sewing machine. And then we'll want to take front and back. So we're gonna place these right sides together and you wanna line up your shoulder seams and line up your side seams. Match those notches on the side seam. And then we're gonna stitch our shoulder seams and our side seams. Let's head over to the sewing machine. So here I have my front and back piece all pinned together and you can sew these seams on a serger. That's what I often do, but if you don't have one, there are a few options on your regular sewing machine. I have a video talking about that and I'll link to it here. This time, just as an example, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and I'm going to use a zigzag with 1.5 wide and 2.2 long. So I'm also using a walking foot and I have my ballpoint needle inserted. And then I'm going to put a piece of tracing paper underneath my fabric, just where I'm starting to stitch it. And that will help move the fabric along. Once I get started and there's fabric all the way under this foot, I don't need the tracing paper anymore, um, but that will just help it move along. If you don't have a walking foot, you might want to use tracing paper underneath your entire seam and that will really help stabilize your stitching. So let's go ahead. This is a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so 
that's one shoulder seam and you just do the same for the other one. And when you're done, gently tear away the tracing paper. So you can see that seam is nice and stretchy. Now let's do a side seam. I have this all pinned together. You wanna to match the notch and the side seam if you remembered to clip that notch. And again with my tracing paper. Okay, then you'll just tear away that tracing paper again and repeat for the other side seam. Now, if you wish, you can overlock this edge using your conventional machine or using a serger. Usually knit fabrics don't fray very much, so you can also just leave it raw. While we're here, let's stitch our neck and arm bands. So you, you're gonna have three of these little strips and we just wanna stitch the short ends together, right sides together, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You'll get all three of these stitched with the short ends together so that you have a little circle of fabric and then we'll take these over to the pressing station. So just do a quick little press of your seams to the back for the shoulders and for the sides. Press these. I'm gonna press my seam open. If you surged it, you can press it to one side and then I'm just going to fold it wrong sides together and just try to get those raw edges really matched up so that after you attach this to your tank top, you're gonna to have a really even width of band all the way around. This fabric can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, uh, but I think kind of keeping it in a loop like this helps keep it under control. Also, a little bit of steam will usually help get these bands going into the shape that you want. All right, now we're gonna mark the quarter points. So I'm gonna start, and my starting point is the seam, and then at the other end from the seam, I will put a pin, and that is my halfway point. And then if I fold this in half again and I match my seam and my halfway point, the folded ends will be my quarter points and I will put pins in those. There we go, we have our four points marked. This one, I didn't put a pin in because the seam is my marker that it's the starting point. And then you wanna do the same with your tank top. So let's do an armhole. I've done a video where I do a neck band before and I'll put a link into that video. So I thought it would be more helpful if in this video I just show you how to do the armhole. So I want to put the seam in my band at this side seam. So that's going to be kind of my starting point for folding this in half. And you just fold it matching those curves. The halfway point's not at the shoulder seam, it's actually somewhere here on the back. I'll just put a pin there and then you can fold this in half and I'm gonna match the fold to the seam line. And here's my quarter point. And then you could fold it the other way or if your fabric is staying pretty lined up, you can just match it with this pin. And now you have your quarter points all marked. Okay, now let's pin our band to the armhole. So I'm going to take the seam and the band and right sides together, match that seam to the underarm seam and pin this in place. Then I'll find the next pins and match those together and just pin it. You just remove one and put the other pin in place for both. And then here's our halfway point. And then the same for our final three quarter point. You'll do the same thing for the neck opening and the other armhole. And then let's go over to the sewing machine. All right, I have my machine set to a straight stitch at 4.1 length. 
I have my sharp right side out and then I'm going to sew it with kind of this loop up. So the, the shirt is up, the band is down. And I th this works best for me because when the shirt is on the bottom, sometimes it can kind of pull away. So I feel like I have better control when the shirt is on top. We're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So what we want to do is we're going to stretch the band to fit the hole on the shirt. Just want to pull it, try not to pull the tank top, but pull the band until it fits. And then just make sure you get these raw edges aligned. And again, try to have an accurate seam allowance so that that band is the same size all the way around the armhole. So you just stitch right up to your next pin, remove that pin, and then you can adjust. And we're gonna pull this band and remember, we want our seam allowance going to the back. So get all these raw edges aligned. And we'll stitch right down. And then we're just going to repeat the same thing until we get back to the beginning. All right, we got that all stitched on. Now let's go back to the ironing board and we're gonna make sure that we like the way that this looks. So I always like to base this on first so that I can test the fit, make sure I don't get any wrinkles because every fabric behaves a little differently and sometimes you need a longer band or a shorter band. And in my other video, I go into that in more detail and show some different examples. So what I like to do after basting it is it's really handy to have a tailor's hand and then just give it a light press and see if everything is flat and if it's looking good and then adjust the length of the band or any of your stitching if needed. So I think this looks like it'll be pretty good, pretty flat. Um, really steam can help a lot in flattening things out. So once I'm happy with the band, I will usually just serge this edge, trimming away the excess. You could also use a stretch stitch or the zigzag stitch on your conventional machine. I'm going to go ahead and serge this and then repeat the same process for the other armhole and the neck hole. All right, I've got all my bands sewn onto my tank and now I'm just going to finish up with the top stitching. I have a whole video about how to use a twin needle and tips for using it and I'll put a link in here. In my sew along for the shorts pattern, I use a zigzag stitch to top stitch. So if you're interested in seeing that method, I recommend checking out that sew along video. So I've actually gone ahead and I've top stitched most of this. I've done all the armbands and I just have the neckline left to do. So I want all my threads pulled to the side with kind of medium length tails. And then I generally like to start at the back and I have my tank top inside out so that it's easier to stitch with the right side up. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm kind of sewing a loop. Um, so it might look backwards, but it makes it easier. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm using a wider twin needle, which I think looks really nice. It really gives you that faux cover stitch look. I'm gonna get this thread out of my way. Okay. And I've kind of settled that on my machine, it really works well to have a 3.2 length on my stitch. And every machine, I think, really handles the twin needle differently. So on this one, it really works fine to have um, just regular thread in the bobbin. And it has a twin needle setting, which I think also really helps. On other machines, you may want to use wooly bobbin thread in your um, wooly nylon thread in your bobbin or adjust the tension on the machine. 
So I'm just trying to be really careful that I stitch evenly. I'm stitching through the fabric that makes up the tank top and then the seam allowance of the binding. So I'm not actually stitching on that neckband, just the seam allowance of the neckband and the seam allowance of the top. And that's just gonna hold it flat and give it a really lovely finish. Okay, we're getting close to where we started. So I am going to pull all my threads to the back side and tie them in a knot. And this is one of the keys to a clean twin needle finish. You don't want to back stitch because um, the threads can get all tangled and messy. So I have all three threads here on the back and I will just tie it in a double knot and trim. You could also thread these tails underneath these other threads. Maybe one more stitch and then lift your needle, lift the presser foot and then pull the fabric away. We'll trim and again bring those threads to the wrong side. And the reason you want to pull um, those where the threads that you started with before you get back there is if you is because if you stitch over those threads, then they can get all jumbled and it's really hard to tie a knot. Um, if one of your threads is knotted and you can't easily pull it through to the back, you can thread, thread it with a needle and then um, just push it to the wrong side using your hand needle. I had a little bit of technical difficulty there and my video cut out, but I have gone ahead and top stitched all of the armhole and neck hole using that twin needle technique. And then to hem the bottom of the tank top, you just turn the edge to the wrong side, one half inch, give it a good press, and then top stitch. And you can top stitch using the twin needle or a zigzag. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that video and that you love your tank top. If you have not gotten this pattern yet, I will put a link down in the show notes to check out the pattern and to check out the sew along, which has a lot of blog posts that can help you sew knit fabric. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing!